What's up, Trainiacs? Welcome to this week's Triathlon Newsday Tuesday. It is a very busy week. Lionel Sanders does things that Lionel Sanders does. Pals of ours do really well in races, and Iron Man announces... Just insert the eye roll emoji right now. What's up triathletes? Welcome to this week's Newsday Tuesday. It was a very busy week, so we'll get into it right away. Make sure you stick around to the end where we will share everyone's favorite part of the Newsday. It is a Trainiac story from around the world. And as always, links to full videos for anything that we mention are in the description below. Let's start off with Iron Man and the chaos that is Iron Man Texas. Last week, Matt Hansen and Mel Hostrell set new Ironman branded race course records at Ironman Texas. A couple days later, Ironman themselves announced that the bike course was short and that those records would be invalidated. A couple days later, over this past week, literally just hours after last week's Triathlon Newsday Tuesday, Ironman announced that the races would be revalidated. Seriously, Iron Man? Get your shirt together. After a year away, the 35th anniversary of the Wildflower Triathlon happened, and this is a very big event known as the Wildflower Festival. It's a very iconic race. Six-time defending champion Jesse Thomas went there, finishing second and passing the crown to Rudy Von Berg. On the women's side, Heather Jackson claimed her fourth race and had a ton of fun doing it. Ironman St. George happened, which is the 70.3 North American Championships, and Lionel Sanders won in 3.41.11, just ahead of Sebastian Keenly by about a minute and a half. On the women's side, another Canadian, Paula Finley, won her first really big race in years in 4.15.52, just ahead of Jeannie Seymour and Sarah True, both of whom have appeared in the Triathlon Terran podcast, Jeannie Seymour was just published this past weekend, so go check that out. The Triathlon Terran Podcast is, by the way, the most highly reviewed triathlon podcast in the world. This is basically an all Ironman race kind of week. Ironman Port Macquarie 70.3 happened, which is an age group only event, and 70.3 Busselton was won by Terenzo Bizon. What else is new? The guy's winning everything this year, and the women's side of Busselton was won by Liz Blatchford. Comments below for how badly I pronounced Busselton. Full Ironman Australia also happened with Laura Siddle, our pal, who has appeared on the podcast, winning by over 24 minutes. And she is on fire this year. And I will say that she didn't race before she was on the podcast. Goes on the podcast, wins a whole bunch. Not saying we're totally responsible for it, but pretty much we are. Marino Van Hohenacker won the men's side of that race, claiming his 17th Ironman victory in his career. And let's round it out with everyone's favorite time of Triathlon Newsday Tuesday, and that is a story from the Trainiac community. This week's story comes from Ricardo in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's short and sweet, and I think you're gonna like it. I started running at the end of 2016, three times a week at just a 6.45 minute per kilometer pace. 10 minute miles, if that, 11 minute? On my 29th birthday, I made a promise to myself that I would change my life. Then a friend of mine who was already doing Ironmans began motivating me to purchase a bike and start training. In June 2017, I did my first sprint distance triathlon and crossing that finish line was a bump of motivation to dig deeper into the sport. And I started training harder and improved my speed and stamina. I'm in love with the sport now and cannot see myself not doing it anymore. I accidentally even motivated a lot of people around me due to my life change and weight loss. I lost 24 kilos or 52 pounds and I now have some friends who are trained to do their first race. I completed my first 70.3 Ironman yesterday in Florianopolis, Brazil and it went great until mile 10 when my legs felt like a 400 pound concrete block. But when I reached the blue carpet close to the finish line, all that pain went away 
and I was wishing that moment could last way longer. One of the happiest days of my life. One year ago, I was overweight and I started triathlon as a major challenge in my life. And here I am reporting from the beach after a 519 finish time. I think this is an awesome story to share. Thank you for sending it in, Ricardo, because it kind of shows how those dominoes fall, that a friend motivated Ricardo, and then Ricardo is motivating other people to do life changes. And I think that's important for all of you to know that even just within a year of taking up the sport and Ricardo wasn't a superstar right at the start, but he still motivated people around him to make their life changes. So I think that you all should know that that's what you're doing to the people around you. So good on you, Ricardo. Good on all of you for getting going. Thank you for watching this week's Triathlon Newsday Tuesday. Comes out just about every Tuesday where we talk about news on the day. If you aren't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. If you are subscribed and you like these Newsday Tuesdays, hit the like button. And like I said, go check out the Triathlon Terran podcast. It's the most highly reviewed triathlon podcast in the world. We are quick with these now. Holy moly.